Esperanza 243 Long Live Manavia Part 28 um, this is hopefully the third time is the charm <laughs> this is my third time recording this and um, because uh, for two reasons one I thought I could uh, try to get more pages in the reading um, mainly because I want this I've said this in, in part 27 um, I want this whole collection to be in 30 videos, but um, because I used 480 pixels for that recording, uh, for the second, this this was, this was happened for the in the second recording. First recording was just a screw up. <laughs> uh, um, anyways, sec the second recording lasted for about 45 minutes, um, unedited. Uh, and so I actually attempted at editing it, and it the whole video just got cut in half. I couldn't edit anything. And I was nervous to put the video in the Windows Movie Maker software, because, as some of you know, <laughs> it cuts everything into slides. So I wouldn't know how long the video is until I combine them all and can't really combine them all when I need to edit them. Actually, oh yeah, I could have done that. Anyways, um, so I really wanted to, wanted the whole collection to be in 30 videos. Uh, and do like these um, hour of power kind of things uh, that I've seen gamers do, including the creatures. But unfortunately, because um, because of the 480 pixels, I want to keep using the 480 pixels so that you guys don't have to watch such crappy quality, you know. Um, because, I mean, not only are you listening to my book reading, you're also watching me. And I don't want to look, I, I don't want to look ugly on YouTube, even though I kind of already do. Um, I'm not saying that to hurt my self-esteem, seriously. <laughs> I know there are times when I make faces that just make me look hideous. <laughs> um, so... Um, I actually got a lot done today, um, well, not a whole lot, but I'm going to. Like, I've already done, I've already done the first editing part uh, of part 27, and, uh, and so all I gotta do is put that through Windows Movie Maker, and then put it on YouTube. Because I've told you guys about, um, I've told you guys about the editing system with Windows Movie Maker and Magix. Let me just say it one more time. Separately, they're almost worthless. Together, piece of cake. Um, because <laughs> with Magix uh, Video Easy SE, that's for, that's particular um, version of Magix that, that I have. You have to, ha if you want to put background music or anything in the background, you have to throw in that whole silence, that, you have to throw in a whole bunch of silence or something else in order to get to that specific part you want music to be in. Whereas with Windows Movie Maker, you can actually put background music or background voices wherever you want. It's neat. Uh, that's, what, that's what I've been doing. In case any of you are interested. So, um, yeah, let's get to the book reading. Um, or, I should say, recap. Um, and let's see, in part 27, we learned that Frederick is still pissed. Prince Frederick is still pissed. He wants proof that Nicolau, I'm going to say it again, N-I-C-O-L-A-U, Nicolau, he wants, Fr Prince Frederick wants proof that Nicolau is his son. So he goes to Senor Pujadas. Um, 
he and the senor talk to each other about, uh, you know, the proof and how Senor Pujadas knows about uh, his, his twin children. And then after that, um, a few days later, Prince Frederick and Princess Mariona are talking to Nicolau's adopted parents, and that is where we are. Let's get to it. We had our son around that time, if I remember correctly. I remember we tried to guess when he was born, so we could adopt him. Sorry. Sweetheart, no one was to... Mediona interrupted him. I apologize for interrupting, but that is why my husband and I are here. I do not understand, the man said with confusion. Dear, I believe Nicolau is telling the truth. His wife told him. Mariona and Frederic gave her a look. Her husband looked at her. They are his parents. He told you? Frederick whispered. She nodded. What else did he tell you? Nicolau's adopted father sighed. I gotta stop using that word. He believes you are Prince Frederick and Princess Mariona. It is best if we keep that secret, they said at the same time. Why? It became quiet for a while. Not many people would want to know they are alive, Mariona said quietly. The couple gasped. Nicolau is right. We are the prince and princess. The woman's eyes grew wide with excitement, but her husband's eyes grew wide with fear. Frederic and Mediona became confused of their reactions. We raised the prince? She whispered excitedly. Mariona nodded. The woman looked at her husband with her excited look. But then she became worried with his expression. He looked scared. What is wrong, dear? A tear rolled down his cheek. They shall want Nicola to live with them, he whispered. He shook his head. I am not ready. Oh dear, the princess said, we are not to take him. Oh, we are not here to take him. She looked at Frederic and then looked back at the couple. To be honest, we are not certain to go public. After all, everyone thinks we are dead. The man nodded in agreement. His wife gasped. What about Prince Nicole? Does he know? I believe he thinks we, we are dead, Frederic told them. She thinks otherwise. He smiled faintly as he directed his head toward her. I know my brother. He is hoping we are still alive. If he doesn't, we are in for a surprise, the man responded. The prince and princess nodded honestly. What are we to do? Do not tell anyone our secret, Frederic said. That is understandable, the woman said. She paused. How long shall you stay in hiding? She bit her lower lip nervously. That shall depend on the people, they said at the same time. Though Prince Nicole should hear word of us soon. Caprice is quite a reputation after Princess Fanchon brought some of her dresses. Why does the name Caprice sound familiar? The woman whispered abruptly. 
Midiona smiled. She would have looked a lot like me. The woman gasped. I remember. She came by. She came by early. <laughs> Mediona smiled. She would have looked a lot like me. The woman gasped. I remember. She came by earlier this week and left a message for Nicolau. She paused. Well, what does this girl have to do with the prince hearing word of you? The princess gave her a soft look. She gasped again. She is your daughter. How is that possible? She and Nick are about the same age. They are the same age. Frederic told her. Caprice and Nicolau are twins. That must mean they were born before the riot broke out? The man questioned. No, they were born the night the riot happened. I'm going to take a little break. So much for wanting to do 30 videos. It's going to be 32 videos instead. Um, okay, so I know I talked a whole bunch last video about Camp Nano and my book. I just want, but I I just want to talk about it just a little bit. Just to catch you up on what I've done today so far, um, I have actually, I actually have a total of um, a little over nine thousand words actually, and so today I, I've already that's, I've already written enough today, but I'd like to add at least two hundred more words, um, mainly because. I'm on a roll. Um, at the point of the book I'm at right now, it's actually um, where she vis where Rebecca visits uh, the Christmas dimension one last time. And so with it being the one last time, oh, 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 oh. I really do feel like I'm getting close. I, I do feel like I'm already at the end of the book, but I know I have quite a bit to write. So I, I'm hoping so bad that I can make this book last long enough to get 20,000 words. If not, I'll probably have to change my word goal on Camp Nano to 15,000 15, words instead of 20. But hey, that's fine with me. Um, let's hope that works. This is going to be interesting. I certainly cannot sign out with this one at the end of the video. I'll give it a try. <laughs> Anyways, let's get back to the reading. I cannot believe it is getting this dark, she whispered. It is only a few hours after lunch. She hurried she hurried off toward the palace in her chase. It grew dark with gray and black clouds covering the sky. She could barely see the sun's rays. In a matter of minutes, she was inside and walking down a hallway toward the room she had met Princess Fanchon. Caprice sighed. This is so exciting. I never thought she would invite me to a party. When she arrived in the grand room, she was surprised. It was almost crowded with guests. People talked, drank, walked around, or both. Caprice walked to a spot not too far from the door and stayed there. She became quite nervous. 
or no, she was quite nervous. Suddenly, there became a clash of thunder and lightning. The lights in the room flickered. Several people started muttering as some looked out the windows. It was like this the, the night before I left, her grandma whispered in French. Caprice gasped and looked toward her. Her eyes widened. Grandma! She looked around. No one was looking at her, so she huddled closer to Louisa. What are you doing here? she asked in French. They continued speaking French. A grand party was arranged, though I had no part in it. I had explicitly told them I did not want a party to celebrate the closure of the riot. How did you die? It was my time to die. I grew weak after the riot. I feared I would never see my beautiful daughter again. She looked at her granddaughter and placed a hand on her face. I am glad she survived long enough to have a child. She's still alive, grandmother, she whispered with a smile. Louisa gave her a blank look. She gave birth to twins. My brother should arrive here any minute. Her grandmother looked around. Caprice chuckled. When I got the invitation to this party, I asked Princess Fenshin if I could bring him along. Louisa looked worried. Be careful. This was, this was where the party was, and it was stormy that, that night. The lights in the room flickered again as thunder rumbled. People started murmuring, worried that the storm was getting worse. Caprice looked around. She couldn't help but look at the people who were worried and looking around. Then she faced Louisa. Only Louisa wasn't there. Why is it she comes when I think about mom and dad? She whispered. As she left the room, she bumped into Nicolau. Caprice, why are you leaving? She looked at him. It is too crowded in there. Would you mind if we walked? I do not mind. He looked at her as they started walking. I like your dress. How did you make it so round? Caprice smiled. I am glad you asked. I used a hoop long enough to go down to the floor. I thought it would help cover what I am wearing underneath. He widened his eyes. I do not like the sound of that. He muttered. She laughed. She motioned him to come closer. As he did so, she carefully pulled away where her round dress touched her hips. Nicolau saw something that looked like bronze, gold, and silver. What is that? It's my sword she whispered. He gasped and gave her big eyes. Oh, do not worry. I only use it for protection. When did you get that? Senor Baldwin gave it to me as a gift. She smiled softly. I think it was his way of saying my training was complete. Nicola was about to say something, but she continued talking. It is not only it is not the only thing I am wearing. I decided to add a set of what do those Americans call it? They are called Capri pants. They go down to my knees. Her brother became speechless. She laughed. Say something. He was stunned. I cannot believe my sister is so knowledgeable. She hit him. What? Do you have to say that out loud? Everyone knows that I'm from Maltrova. If they find out I came here alone and discovered a brother, who knows what rumors they shall create? He stared at her with shock. 
I do not care what they think of me, but if they get wind of who my family is, we could be in big trouble. You are right. I am so sorry, Caprice. They walked in silence for a while. This is as far as I shall go. I want to go to the party. That is fine. I shall continue on. I still feel a bit weak after the lights flickered from the storm. He smiled and headed to the party. As she walked around the palace, she gazed at the portraits and decorations. It took a while for Caprice to realize she was heading outside. She looked around. There was not one person in sight, not even the guards. She gulped. Suddenly, I feel not welcome here. She thought. She turned to go back when she thought she heard a sound. She stood still. There were quick footsteps going somewhere. At first, they came from her left and then faded to her right. Caprice eyed that direction. She slowly walked to that corner of the connected hallways. She looked around the corner. Her eyes widened. There were at least three men. Two were, two were well built and the third was chubby, but just as muscular as the others. They huddled close to each other and started whispering. You remember what to do now? One man hissed to the chubby man. The chubby man, Didek, gave him a dirty look. Of course I know what to do. The question is, do you know what to do? Cut it out, you two, the other man hissed. The prince and princess will arrive at the party any minute. We need to be there when they do. This time, keep your eye on time. On them, sorry. We do not want a ruckus like last time. They started walking toward the party. Hey, one of the men cried. It wasn't my fault her mother got in the way. Besides, she got what was coming to her. That's right, Didac said. That wound was treated carelessly. That's why she died so soon. One of the men faced him. She wasn't supposed to die that soon. If you had treated that wound, Princess Louisa would have ruled, like we planned. Caprice widened her eyes. As least, at least no one shall suspect a thing, the other man said. They nodded. Just a few drops in their drinks and Master shall be Prince, just like it should be. The three men continued talking on their way to the party, but of, but of a different subject. Caprice followed them. She wasn't that careful, though. She bumped into a table, knocking over a silver vase filled with flowers. She tried catching it. The vase crashed onto the floor, breaking into tiny pieces. The men heard the crash and turned toward it. She hid behind the table. Didek, stay behind. Find out if anyone overheard us, one of them said. Didek nodded. The two well-built men continued on as the others stayed behind. He stealthily walked around, looking every which way. Parti, parti, au que vous soyez, he whispered. Caprice held in her breath as he inched close to her spot. And that's where I'll stop. <laughs> mm. All right, that's it. I better stop the video before it gets screwed up like last time. I will talk to you guys later. This is the Esperanza 2 for 3 signing off.